Hello and welcome to a new series on Clan Macad. This is going to be a tips and tricks series for AutoCAD, also introducing tools that you may have missed along the way. So the series is aimed at someone who's used AutoCAD before, not necessarily really experienced, nor a beginner anywhere in between should work. So if you've used it just briefly, you're starting a college course, it should be great for learning tips and tricks and or tools you might have missed. And if you've used it for a while, then it could be a good way to make sure that you're just not missing any tools that could otherwise help your workflow. Now the main reason I'm not doing this within AutoCAD itself is I firmly believe if you use AutoCAD all the time at college or at university or at work professionally, I genuinely believe from personal experience as well that you don't really want to come home to learn something new, look at a YouTube video and then start staring at the full CAD screen again because you do that all day if not eight plus hours a day we want to reduce that as much as possible, so by bringing it down to a really minimalistic approach, we can really get into the guts of uh, the information you're actually seeking. Another thing this allows us to do, using the animated style as opposed to showing the CAD screen, is I can actually show you what episodes are coming up and what tools and tips and tricks you might expect, and what ones have been previously, allowing you to navigate the series at your own pace, and you know, if you see something coming up that you're not that sure you need to know, or if you're sure you're already completely comfortable with it, you can skip over it until next time. Or if you see something previously that you actually realized that you've missed and you'd really like to know, you'll be able to get those kind of glances and it'll help you navigate using the video rather than navigating manually. So for our first episode, we're going to have a look at a tool called Overkill. And as you can see, as I mentioned earlier, you can see what episodes two and three will contain as we move through the series. So Overkill is a tool used to tidy up your CAD drawings. It simply reduces the number of excess lines, literally removing the overkill, hence the name of your, your drawing habits. Another thing you'll notice about the series at this stage is we're only going to look at the pieces of interface that are actually completely relevant to the tip or trick or tool that we're going to look into. Now we're going to use the ribbon that was brought in 2010 onwards, but don't worry for you old school guys, I'm always going to refer to the type in command so you can check if that tool is available in your version of AutoCAD as well. So we'll find overkill in the home tab and in the modify panel you have to drop the modify panel down into its extra options which you do simply by clicking on the word modify and you'll get the other two rows of buttons at the bottom. And it's the little broom you're looking for for overkill, as it's a tidy up tool, obviously, so it's sweeping away all the mess. And you can see in the help tooltip that it deletes duplicate objects and says it cleans up overlapping geometry by removing duplicated and or unneeded objects. So it literally is only trying to get rid of stuff that you don't need to show the geometry you're trying to show. And the type in command is, as you can see, overkill. So for our first example, if you find yourself the kind of person who to build an extra snap point, you might draw back up a line a certain distance. So we'll draw this main line here and we'll go back up a certain distance to then use as a grip point for another perpendicular line coming out um, a certain distance up the original line. You're creating an extra line there that isn't actually necessary. You could have extended with an object snap trace upwards, typed in your distance and drawn along to skip drawing a line. But if you find yourself the kind of person that draws in that extra line and then maybe forgets to delete it later on, overkill is perfect. So what happens here, if we select all of these objects here and run overkill, whether by typing it or clicking the button, it's up to you. And if we hit enter after we select them, this little pop-up here will show up. Now this pop-up dictates everything whatsoever, but you can just go with the default settings if you're not very sure, and it won't generally do anything untoward. I've never had it delete something. I didn't otherwise want it to delete because the default settings are the most reserved and the most careful. So to go into more detail about the pop-up here, the first option you get there is the tolerance and that's simply how to many decimal places CAD will determine a line as on top of another or overlapping with another. So the leaving that at the default settings basically means unless you've used object snaps, it's pretty much going to be regarded as separate lines. So you can be the most careful with that there but if you do find that you want to just reduce maybe some sort of distance between some lines you can start bumping that tolerance up um, and it will start to regard them further and further apart as overlapping or duplicate lines. The ignore object property section simply allows overkill to look through different variables. Um, it by default will 
ignore any lines, even if they're perfect duplicates of each other that have any difference in any of these variables. For example, if you had two lines on the same layer with a change in color, which is the first tick box there, it would ignore them completely because they're two different colors and it thinks you want them to be two different lines with two different colors. Even if they're absolutely on top of each other, it will completely ignore them. And similarly, if they're on two different layers, it will completely ignore them. By ticking any of these boxes, you're just simply saying, even if they're on a different variable setting on any of these settings here, if they're on a different layer, tick that on and it will delete duplicates on different layers if you have that ticked. If you have them all unticked, it will ignore any variable setting. So going down into the options section at the bottom there, Optimize segments within polylines simply means overkill will run on polylines as well as lines. It will have a look at polylines even though they're all joined together. It will look at individual segments of the polyline, hence the name there. And then there's two little sub options there that allow you a little bit more control as to what it avoids doing, such as breaking a polyline open, which you might not want. Tick that on and it won't happen. Now the option below that, combine collinear objects that are partially overlapped, is exactly our situation here. We've drawn a main line and then drawn an overlapped collinear line back up the exact direction of the original line to give ourselves that extra snap point to then move on and draw an another line perpendicularly. This extra wee line is helpful but completely unnecessary in the final state of the drawing. It doesn't add any geometry, it doesn't add any information for the viewers, so therefore we can use overkill to tidy this up. And on a large scale drawing you might have hundreds, thousands or even hundreds of thousands of these little lines kicking around if it's in your habit to do so or if someone in your office has a habit to do so and you know you're collaborating towards the a finished drawing. It can be a really good thing to consolidate and reduce the overall workload of the PC while running the drawing and reduce the overall storage of the file when you're archiving it later on and stuff like that. So really good habit to make sure this tool is run as much as possible. Now the last two options I'll just discuss in example two just to break this up a little. So when we press OK to this, what Overkill is going to do is going to analyze the selected objects for any of these conditions that I've ran it with. So the tolerance comes in, the ignores come in, and then the options down the bottom, whether I've told it to bother checking for a certain condition or not, it's going to have a little look at all the lines and try and optimize them as much as possible according to your settings, essentially. So in this case, because I had the overlap setting on for collinear objects, what it's done is deleted the little line going back up to give me that snap point for the perpendicular line. I've now got the perpendicular line in place, it's fine, it's sitting there, no bother, but I've only got one line down the left there and it's nice and tidy, optimized and not any excess overkill. So for example two, what I've done here is just drawn the same situation again, but instead of drawing the main line once and then the little line back up, what I've actually done is drawn it in two sections. So say you had two sizes and then you wanted the snap point in between, what I've done is drawn some of the main line and then the little line down the bottom separately. So they're end to end, which again, you might have spotted is the second last option there. The lines aren't overlapping at all, but they're perfectly touching end to end. And again, they are perfectly collinear in the same direction. So if we select this up and run overkill on it again, what we get is that same pop up. And again, like I said, it's the second last option there that says combine collinear objects when aligned end to end which is our situation as I've described it. The lines are perfectly touching end to end. They're not overlapping at all, but they are in the same exact direction. And therefore it's gonna tidy them up and turn them into one continuous line instead of two. So the last option there, which says to maintain associative objects, I'd say the main example of that would be arrayed objects. So if you array something in a pattern, say you arrayed a set of windows, which are rectangles and they're touching side by side, you wouldn't maybe necessarily want overkill to delete one of the sides of one of the windows, because maybe you go and stretch out the spacing between them and then oh, oh, one of the sides of the windows is missing because overkill tidied it up once upon a time. So by saying maintain associative objects, it won't mess up your arrays so that you can go and change them at another time. So as you can see, if we finish up this time, what we get is the two lines that were previously end to end and separate lines entirely, merging together to form one large line. Again, just optimizing everything for the computer and the storage and the memory and all the rest of the good stuff. Okay, so that's us for overkill. And as you can see, the main advantage of this is just about tidying up drawings, especially really large ones, where you might have had a bad habit here or there and tidying it all up and getting rid of all that extra overkill 
is very beneficial to the computer's performance and also just your ability to store more files as you you know progress with projects and things like that it's always good to really reduce the excess that you don't need okay so thanks for watching and i will see you next time